Hello and welcome to this latest Chassis Sim video tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be discussing how you deal with circuits where you've got significant altitude changes and significant camber changes that you need to take into account. Now believe it or believe it or not it's actually a hell of a lot easier than what it looks so without further ado let's get started. Now your first point is to basically create your curvature file first. That's your first thing that you need uh, that you need to do. So once you've done that, you go into circuit, edit circuit altitude and camber, and if you're starting and if you're starting this from scratch, all you've got to do is click on edit current circuit altitude and road camber file. You then import the curvature file that you're most interested in. And now that you've got your curvature file, there are a couple of ways you can do it. If you've got existing GPS data, all you need is basically to have two columns. First, uh, uh, first of all, if you're looking at circuit altitude, you have the first column, which is track distance in meters, and the second column, which is track elevation in meters. And to do that, all you'd have to do is click on import circuit altitude from GPS. And if you had it here, you would simply click on it, click on open, and that would automatically ad uh, adjust the altitudes in here. Ditto for um, road, uh, uh, ditto for road camber as well. Please bear in mind though, if your data has road camber as left banking as positive, click on here because Chassis Sim needs to do its bits and pieces because left banking is entered as negative in Chassis Sim, right banking is entered as positive. So, using this particular uh, uh, using this particular example, why don't we take a look at a particular example where, say, we've started off. We have a track distance from, say, zero meters and an altitude from zero meters. And let's just say that we go to an altitude here in this corner here of approximately 40 meters. So what we'll do is I select the region where it's 40 meters and I go shift, uh, hold the shift key down and hit the right arrow key to select a, a zone. Now, to play with altitude, I click on A for altitude. And let's just say for the sake of the argument, I'm going to change that to 20 meters. Now, to linearize that, what I'm going to do is, uh, as you can see here, we've got our current position, our start position, and our end position with our altitude of 20 meters. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to, uh, the, I'm just need to linearize that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to use the left arrow key and go back to where the circuit is going to start off from. Hit the shift arrow key, hitting the right arrow key, and as you can see, my current position is incrementing up. My start position is 180 meters. And I just go L for linearize. And as you can see, all of a sudden, that now gives me my gradual altitude. Now, let's just say, for the sake of the argument, I'm now going to uh, let's just say the circuit altitude is going to uh, is going to vary very uh, very gently from 20 meters to about from 20 meters, and I'm just going to go right up here. In reality, this circuit actually doesn't do this, but this is more for an illustration purposes. And now, I'm, uh, let's just say that we're at, say, 60 metres here. So I'm hitting the shift key, using the right arrow key, going down here. And what I'm going to do is I'll just go A for altitude, click on 60 metres, click on OK. And as you can see, I'll go back on the left arrow key and that's 60 metres. So what I'm going to do is uh, what I'm going to do. And if you ever make a mistake, what you've got to do is hit the shift and space key to reset. So I'm just going to go to where I just first had the uh, 60 meters, hold the shift key, use the right arrow key, and go all the way to where we had um, uh, to where we had 20 meters. So I'm just going back, going back, going back, going back, going back to all of a sudden I should see the 20 meter mark come up. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to go control L for linearize. And as we can, uh, and as we can see, just moving forward, as you can see, we're now gradually going up to the 60 meter mark.
Okay, now, what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to just go forward a little bit to this bottom section. And let's just say in this short space, we drop, and I'm just going to select a little bit of a region, we drop, we drop about, say, uh, we drop about, say, four metres. So what I'm going to do is click A for altitude and click on, say, 54 metres. Click on OK. I'm going to now go back, I'll go Shift. Oops, head the wrong way, so we'll just go back here. So that's 54 metres. I'm now going to hit the Shift key and use the left arrow key to go backwards. And now I've got that zone selected, I just go L for linearize, and as we can see, I've now got a really nice smooth transition to 54, uh, I've now got a nice smooth transition to about 54 metres. And now I'm just going to just linearize, uh, now what I'm going to do, oops, sorry, hit the, hit the wrong arrow key, so I'm just going to go left, 60. I'm going to hit shift, and now what I'm going to do is linearize all the way down to this section here, and I'm just going to go control L. And what that does is this now gives me my, uh, uh, this now gives me a nice smooth transition of altitude. So that's basically how you manually edit it. Now, with regards to road canvas, you would do exact, uh, uh, with regards to road canvas, you would do exactly the same thing. Just let me go back to this particular turn here that is a left hander. And let's just say that it, they had some positive banking here. So what I would do is I hit the shift key, move it across like that, hit C for road camber, change that to say minus five degrees, click on OK, and as you can see, for my road camber there, I've got five degrees. Now, obviously, I need to just linearize that a little bit, so I'll go shift to minus five degrees. I'll go control L this time to linearize, and as you can see, if I go back, it's now a nice move transition to five degrees, and what goes up must go down, so we'll do exactly the same thing here. I'll go control L, we go back, and that's basically how we do road camber. Now, if that was a right hand turn and it was positive camber, we'd be entering plus five degrees. So when you're done, you simply click on generate altitude road camber, click on altitude camber file, and now all I would do is I would call this altitude road camber my circuit. Click on open, click on OK, and you're done. Now, usually when you've created something for the first time, you'll click cancel to click that away. But if you're editing something that you want to change, then you'd be clicking on OK. Because this is the first time we've done it, we'll just click on cancel. And we're done. Personally, I would always recommend that if you're going to change stuff with Altitude Road Camper, you'd have version 1, version 2, version 3, version 4. This way, if you screw something up, you've got the old one ready to go. And as you, so as you can see, editing Altitude Road Camper and Chassis Sim is a very, very straightforward, uh, is a very, very straightforward, ex uh, is a very, very straightforward exercise. Now, if you ever get stuck, You've got this feature, Generate Circuit Altitude and Road Camber. This will take a monster file, it'll take a curvature file, and will generate a monster file for you. Just to show you what that looks like, you would click here to generate Altitude Road Camber. You click here for your monster um, import file. So this uh, populates uh, your monster import file. You import your curvature and your bump profile and your desired altitude camber file. You click on OK and Shastin will generate this for you. Please bear in mind, this is a backup if you don't have GPS data. It's something that we found to be relatively useful, but sometimes if you're not careful and if you haven't got your carbon file matched up, it can lead you down the garden path. But it's an option for you to play with. So, as you can see, putting altitude and uh, once again, how you actually import that into chassis sim once you've done that you go to circuit circuit data you click on import altitude camber file and we've got altitude road camber my circuit and you are done and this concludes 
uh, our tutorial on how to edit Altitude Road Camber and Chassis.